Hi, welcome to the All Things LGBTQ interview show, where we interview LGBTQ guests who are making important contributions to our communities. All Things LGBTQ is taped at Orca Media in Montpelier, Vermont, which we recognize as being unceded indigenous land. Thanks for joining us and enjoy the show. Hey everybody, my name is Susan Loyne and I am a guest interviewer on All Things LGBTQ. All of them. All of those letters. Everything. Yep, everything. And I'm here with Ashley Hall, mm -hmm. who, full disclosure, I know, I think I can admit that I know you. It's true. I hope you're comfortable with that. Thank you. Uh, Ashley, I would well. love to share their pronouns, but they don't know what they are. Yeah, you guess as good as mine. That's a thing. And I love you for that. It is fun because you're non-committal, but it's, <laughs> but go on. It's a fun puzzle in English to try to escape using pronouns. It's, it's also, I heard you say earlier, really fun to watch the discomfort in other people Sometimes. when they stumble. It's not a malicious thing. It's no, just, I'm not saying... I, I love, it's, it's kind of a mixture of schadenfreude and like adoring the intention that's clearly being shown. I love that. Yeah. I love that. I appreciate that because as somebody that stumbles over pronouns, yeah. you give me that look. Yeah. You know, you're doing now. Anyway. Everything's a little bit itchy. So do as you will. As long as you mean well, I'm fine. Yes. Uh, what's that song from uh, Avenue Q? Everybody's uh, a little racist, but everybody's a little homophobic. Oh, that one? Sure. Yeah, that, okay. Uh, so um, I'm curious. Uh, you have many fine talents, I must say, having known you from... I, yes. Thank you. But tonight, we're here to talk about acting, if you'd like. I do you like also, so we could stray into other topics, but I'd like you to tell our audience a little bit about how you first became involved with acting, sort of your journey of acting. Yeah, the first show I was in was Late Snow at the Chandler as part of the Vermont Pride Theaters. Kind of, what, how many years were they? they did I, mean, I think for 10 years or so. 10 years. Yeah, it was one of the last years, right? I think the, it was. And, I, and fun fact, that? that's how we met. It is. Huh. Yeah. We, it was, what, four? Five people in the show. Yeah, it was a pretty Five small. Five people in the show. And we shared the opening lines <laughs> of the opening scene. Uh, and the opening uh, lines of my of my theater career. There we go. Oh, nice. Yeah. And we carpooled. I think that was we did. That's what sealed the deal for me. That's when I knew. You know, you have that feeling like people are meant to be in your life. Okay. We're going over Roxbury Gap, and we're carpooling, and we're running lines, which I'm not remembering. <laughs> it's trying to be a good sport. Mm -hmm. And I think I think that yeah. was how we first connected. Yeah. We just have to so have to drive. so. Tell our folks a little bit about what Pride Theater and that experience means like to, to people in the acting community, the importance of. Sure. Well, I think it's, it's, it's just really important to have, um, I mean, safe space has kind of become a buzzword in the past couple of years, but um, this has become politicized, but it, it's nice to know from the outset that the thing that you enjoy is going to be a possibility for you in a space. Um, and that you're going to be respected and, and I don't know, be able to express yourself in a way that is not going to be held against you or withheld from you. Um, yeah, people got to share a bunch of their stories and, and the stories of, um, of queer playwrights. And I, I mean, I kind of came in at the tail end, but, but the shows that I saw and the shows that I heard about, it was, it was, um, it was really neat. Yeah, it was, a, it was a good thing. Yeah. And yeah, it's, it, it's something about that. I mean, theaters around Vermont are, I think, getting better about being open and intentional about um, portraying queer stories and, you know, kind of allowing community members into their midst. But it's it was nice to have it be so intentional and so set aside and um, at the forefront of kind of their mission. Mm -hmm. I, love, I love that. That's that. What That was my experience is it was carved out as a festival, you know, highlighting, yeah. uh, tributing, you know, kind of gay, gay playwrights and also gay actors who otherwise struggled sometimes to find roles, which is a good segue into you and I have had a lot of conversations <laughs> around how gendered and binary uh, yeah. some directors are and how frustrating that can be as an actor who feels that they have a lot to offer, but 
but directors can can yeah. really have narrow ideas about who they want to cast. So tell us a little yeah, bit. Yeah, especially like on a on a community theater uh, level. Mm -hmm. uh, not that we're necessarily but behind the times, but it's it's just people are are more apt to follow the you know, the the character descriptions and and what's what's set out in in a script rather than feeling like they can branch out. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's it's been tough. Uh, you, you you read a script and, and you connect with a character mm -hmm. and you you audition for that character and then to be met with either just a slammed door or a oh cute oh this is not uh, cute that you want wow um cute that you want to play you, a man are you sure you're gonna you want to audition oh okay here here's your no yeah uh that's disheartening um and it's gotten less and less but um yeah. A lot of disappointment, especially to have, I mean, I started acting in 2019, mm -hmm. right before the world shut down. Mm -hmm. And then to have had, uh, yeah, roles like turned down for you mm -hmm. uh, right after mm -hmm. that. Like it's, it's disheartening to be so new to something and so passionate about it. And I think all right at it. Uh, and yes. then, uh, you know, think that, you know, you really dive into a character and make strong choices in an audition and then don't get the chance to actually explore. Mm -hmm. or delve into that character and then to see who does get cast mm -hmm. and it's it's sometimes there's genuine talent don't get me wrong but but a lot of times it's it's you know, someone with a voice that's low enough or a chest that's flat enough or someone who can you know just fit the the vanilla vision that is uh, set forth in the character descriptions yeah. which is <clears throat> yes yeah. and i think you and i also had this conversation yeah. which i appreciate about you is i remember venting to you on this very topic and sharing with you my level of frustration and making this proclamation that i'm just going to start auditioning for male parts yeah like that's going to be my my gig and and i did get cast in several shows yeah at, 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 in a male presenting type role and uh i was like really cool and liberating for me. Sure. So I, I'd, I'd love you to tell us a little yeah, bit. But, about your but are you are you that. are you finding though that in those roles you're you're cast outright or you're cast because there's not enough men in the in the auditioning pool? Oh, that's a great question. I mean, I'd like to think I beat out a couple of men, but but usually there are a lot more women in here. Sure. Sure. Uh, so uh, I can think of. I don't want to name names because we're trying we're trying not to. But let me just say that in a play a play I was in had 16 women mm. audition for four female roles mm. and two men audition for four male roles. Okay. Do the math there. So when I said, yeah. hey, you know, via via Facebook or chat yeah. or whatever it was, like, I'll play a guy. Yes, they said, sure. So uh, I'm trying to kind of reclaim the gender thing yeah. and get away from that whole binary thing. But, but I want to... I'd love for you to tell us about your experience with our town because that to me was a coming together that was purely your talent. This had yeah. nothing to do with gender. So tell us more about that. Uh, yeah. Our town was a production, what was it 2022? Two summers I don't ago. Know. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Some of for last. Right. Sure. Uh, it was still production filled with value players, uh, alumni. <laughs> Yes, uh, that's our home theater for, yeah. for listeners uh, in Waitsfield, Vermont. Yes, uh, directed by Michael Halloran, mm -hmm. and uh, I didn't know who I wanted to audition for, but you know, I, I did like the character of George Gibbs, and I auditioned. I don't know how many people auditioned or who auditioned. Still does, um, just individual, that individual audition. going in by yourself. Yeah, you don't it's really, really nerve wracking, but it's very uh, nerve wracking. Yeah, yeah, I don't for whatever reason, uh, Michael uh, cast me in the role of George Not Gibbs. <laughs> you're amazing but it was it was it was really great and it was i don't know it it was a lot it was it was kind of it felt like an honor and then it was terrifying and there mm. was all this grappling with like mm. i'm not what thornton wilder had in mind for this role uh audiences aren't gonna buy this like the cast is just humoring me right. um like how real is this performance type of a deal but something that uh michael really uh impressed upon us is that like your character especially in a show like our town where the characters are kind of like bl blank slates mm -hmm. uh it's it's so important for the actors to bring who they are into the character that they're playing and that's kind of what's made the the show so timeless is that 
the actors who are portraying these these timeless roles uh, are able to bring who they are and, and and put it into the play. And so I was terrified, but I leaned into that and it, it was yeah, it was a it was a a good show. It was a it was a great show. It was an underattended show, but it was really, really, really <laughs> meaningful. Yeah, and just uh, I ended up joining the cast. Yeah, kind of last minute. Kind of at the last minute, and I was so impressed. I just, you know, had kind of a walk on part, but the amount of effort that everybody put into really, yeah. you know, living those roles. And one of the things that I was fascinated by is kind of a latecomer. There was no, there are no props. There's not a mm -hmm. set, so it's just you. Yeah, you you really have to inhabit that yeah. character. Yeah, you know? I, and I remember you throwing like throwing a bait, catching a baseball, and throwing imaginary things around. Yeah, I think drinking. the stage direction <laughs> is is uh, George um, Kareen's haphazardly down Main Street or something. Yes, yeah, so you were doing this kind of yeah. You know. yeah. Well, tell me a little bit about how important it was to have Michael as a director. Uh, and what his sensibility was. Yeah. Uh, Michael Halloran, it, it's just, it's so evident as, as a, a queer actor, uh, when you have, when you have a director who's part of the community, like mm -hmm. you can have staunch allies who, who will do their best to well-intended, well, they're, they're well-intended, like not, nothing anyone does in this state, I think is, is malicious. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it's ignorant, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. definitely, uh, yep. and misguided, you know, the yes. extra mile in the wrong yep. direction. Yeah. Uh, but it's, it just becomes so evident when you have a director who is part of the community who realizes and recognizes and identifies with the plight of queer actors in, in the state. Um, and then who loves the material that they're directing. Uh, and yeah, no, I just felt very taken care of in that production. Yeah. I mean, we were talking a little bit, um, earlier about how, different it is as a member of the queer community to have a director that's also a member of that community. So, you know, you and I have both had roles of traditional binary playing yeah. men, straight men in situations. And when you, as you said, even when, even well-intended yeah. straight allies, politically correct lefties, you know, liberal thinking people, think oh isn't it cute that you're doing this role they still don't have that sensibility yeah. you know that that the rest of us do in the community and so when you stumble across a director that really understands our yeah. community and understands all those layers yeah. of now I'm you know now I'm going to become male presenting and I'm going to do these things but knowing your sensibility and, and and relating to that and knowing what it's like I think you were saying earlier to be an outsider like, yeah having that lens to direct a play yeah. and having you tap into those pieces of the character, I think is amazing. And I love Michael anyway. Well, shout out to the, Michael. Yeah. So many shout outs to Michael. <laughs> if you can work with him, please do. Michaelhalloran.com or whatever. Right, Michael? He does vocal lessons. He kid. does vocal lessons. Uh, He's amazing. But just the Call him now. Operators are standing by. Just the trust. <laughs> the trust that he he gives to, to his actors uh, to... He, he trusts that you have identified with the character and seen something in them uh, and that you are going to be able to um, tap into something in yourself and be able to bring that to the forefront to portray this. And just this space character. to yeah. experiment, you know, yeah. like, uh, you know, he's just such a giving person to yeah. say, like, I don't know, what do you think? And then, of course, you know, with me, he he's did like <laughs> he did at one point. <laughs> he's, give me... he's reining you back in like, oh, that that was too much. He did at one point. Give me the point. Give me the the, the note that I needed to. uh I needed to what is it, dial up my inner entitled white boy. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Was that hard for you? It was pretty tough. It must be. See, that's, that's acting, yeah. right? So I was thinking yeah. about this, like you and I have both played male roles, but, you know, to channel privilege yeah. when, you know, there are many areas of our life. Male we, children, we though. I've been yes. George Gibbs. Yeah. I've been Linus yeah. von Pelt. Yeah. Pelt. Yeah. Yeah. Well, t so tell us about Charlie Brown. That was, I I, I was, I, I loved that show. I thought you well, were you amazing. Well, know, you know who my Charlie Brown was. You were channeling. Do you know who my, you know who my Charlie Brown was? Yes. Yeah, it was, it was Michael, Michael Howard. <laughs> Michael, we should get Michael on here. We should get Michael on here. Michael. Michael. He is amazing. Anyway. Uh, yes. That was up in Fairfax. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, uh, you know, Linus, who I love. I was Linus. I, yeah. I mean, full disclosure, I shouldn't tell people that I was a thumb sucker. Okay. That's true. Uh, so I loved Linus. I love the security blanket. blanket. Yeah. Love yeah. that. Yeah. 
Yeah, it was fun. Uh, it was, I, had I done music? Yeah, I did Oliver prior to that, but oh. it was one of my first musicals. Um, but yeah, no, it was just a good production. Again, uh, great director. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, a musical that I, I, you know, it's got some nostalgia factor. Yeah, I really liked total it. nostalgic, and yeah. I'm, I'm finding that if, if I care deeply about a show and I can find it directed somewhere even far afield, uh, mm-hmm. directed by someone who's in in this community uh they'll at least give me the time of the day mm. and hear me out and let me like you know give me a give me a chance in the audition room yeah uh yeah. which is huge yeah and it's not always something that's it's extended huge. it's huge um yeah i mean i think that's yeah. part of the reason why i think we continue to do theater is can we present these stories in a way that's a little different than yeah than the the normative uh gender normative blah 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 bullshit stuff that, yeah um yeah so tell me about big question no oh, uh, yes continue <laughs> tell me a little bit about when you think about this is all interrelated sure the state of theater here in vermont for, for queer folk and uh-huh. and you know what if anything do you see changing in the next you know couple of years or what has been your experience it's interesting i've been Fairly, I mean, selective with the shows that I go out for. You know, I've got to care about it. Uh, I've got to know that I've got a chance in the audition room. Mm-hmm. Um, but I've been noticing in, in looking around to different theater companies, um, at least more of an attempt to, to um, or an awareness of gender neutral or indifferent casting uh, <laughs> to identities other than, you know, cis straight male, cis straight female, mm-hmm. uh, and an openness to you know, maybe more progressive uh, plays and pieces of media. Mm -hmm. Um, Audition forms have changed the way that they present their language and their their character descriptions Mm -hmm. and their casting calls, which progress is progress progress uh some of it and is, some of it is is um and then the perhaps some lip service and exactly. to get people in the door um perhaps yeah. um they write it and it's even because, within one form it's because they have to because they have to <laughs> probably yes mm-hmm. uh and it's sometimes it's, it's just very evident it's mm-hmm. like oh i'm I'm not meant to be here mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. and then some are doing it very well mm-hmm. um yeah we were talking about this, I think, uh, the other day around you. I think you were saying you can speak for yourself. I, I I'll, will. I'll let you do that. But I remember you saying the other day that you'd rather have people be kind of straight up. Oh, yeah. Like, Tell me I don't have a chance. Yeah, I'll just like leave not not, not so much homophobic. Yes, yeah, that's too much. But you would rather have people be really clear at the outset that I will not cast oh, yeah. folks in different gendered roles that, that they're not, you know, if they're not presenting or biologically or whatever the correct, politically correct word is you rather kind. know that than yeah. people yeah clear as kind versus well even if you, you can do yeah. anything you can be president oh except yeah. for the fact that we're going to describe anything audition for any role that you feel drawn to except right. you have to this and you have to this and you have to this it's just that's mm-hmm. not that's mm-hmm. that's that's mm-hmm. two different things and, um yeah and also saying uh you know you and i have both does that look I don't know. You're like leading, you're freaking me out a little. Uh, you and I have both had the experience where the director will say to us, uh, is there anything else anybody wants to read? And you sort of raise your hand and pick- Every role I put on my audition form thing. That you didn't ask me to read yeah. for because you believe yeah. me to be female, there's you know, biological, yeah, whatever. There's something freeing when people are aware of the biases that they have. Yes. And are just outspoken with it. I think that's a lot of my a dick. Just be a dick and get on with it. And I'll a go lot find of the it. uncertainty I've had in my entire life is yeah. just not knowing where people stand with certain things. Mm-hmm. Not that they're necessarily like malicious people yeah. or like against anything. It's mm-hmm. just that they are not outspoken to the positive side of things mm-hmm. to the point where you feel comfortable even bringing it up. Right. Yeah. Nah. And we've had that experience and, and uh, you certainly have driven for parts that, that appeal to you, as have I. Yeah. That if you can't find something, again, not mentioning names in a show. It's very intrigued, but we could. And we could. But we're not gonna <laughs> dish. That's another that's episode two. That's, that's, we'll that's about. Yes. the rule uh, of community that is theater. The rule of community theater. Don't burn those bridges. Um but let's just say we've both had the experience of being discriminated against Absolutely. in our passions towards theater because of people's perceptions 
of traditional gender roles. Yeah. That's fair to say, right? Yeah. So now, good, good segue into tell me about your experience at the prom. And let me first say, Lyric, the prom rock star went to see you. You were fabulous. Thanks. Uh, and great. Tell us a little bit about the show itself and what your role uh-huh. was and 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 I was in the tiniest unmiked corner of the adult ensemble. But you rocked it. Even but backstage, I, I knew you were there. I was singing in the wings. <laughs> um, but I was having a ball and a ball because prom, mm. maybe a disco ball. Uh-huh. Um, uh-huh. Yeah, the prom centers around this uh, girl, Emma Nolan, who wants to take her girlfriend to prom. And the homophobic PTA in Edgewater, Indiana, mm-hmm. disagrees. And some misguided but well-intentioned uh <laughs> horrible Broadway stars come to try to help and just end up locking everything up uh, in a way. And then they help. Yeah. But uh, the, the so the prom, so many queer people in the cast. Uh, it was such, fantastic. Such a great storyline, though. So gay affirming. So and gay yeah. affirming. And so, like, pronouns were were uh, accommodated and, and asked for and respected. Uh, and consent was at the forefront of everything. Uh, just it was such an inclusive and diverse and welcoming uh, cast. Nice. Uh, and then most of us are playing homophobes on stage. Oh, was the reality of it. So did uh, I. Sweet. Uh, yeah, we got to. I got to be the homophobic parents from my, you know, perhaps hometown. So that was probably a little close. That was a little probably triggering for you, a little close to the bone. A little like, bit it's... having to <laughs> pretend to be some of the people that maybe tormented you as a youth as you it tormented me they just didn't teach me anything mm. yeah yeah the irony uh, being that uh yeah caitlin kinnan who played the role on on broadway of emma nolan was mm-hmm. from from your school uh she's your homeschooled area. but yeah, yeah my like area general school district area. yeah yeah um, but uh she was homeschooled was... and didn't have that issue and then i was public schooled and mm. didn't yeah it was quite alarming in the audience to see <laughs> Somebody else oh, knowing you, you, knowing and loving you, yeah. as you as our friends do. We were, yeah, yeah. I and thought then, I was a shoe in for what? uh like queer teen or yes. homophobic yes. teen, perhaps. Yeah, uh, I or, kind of do the like middle school boy thing. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, I could, I totally expected you'd be cast as a high schooler, but no, but no. homophobic no. ETA. Parent. Suddenly now you're yeah. an adult. Like all these years where you've been trying to audition as an adult. You look too young, and now yeah. here you are saying, "I'm, I'm, I'm in. I'm going to yeah, be in. I'm going to be. It's all right. Yeah, I'm going to be a football player. I'm going to yeah. be a home. Yeah. yeah, it was fun. Uh, but yeah, that was uh, that was amazing. Yeah, just very... existing in that space and in the cast, too and... much talent for their own good. Yeah, I hope yeah. to be back. Oh my shows. gosh, we actually, uh, you and I went to the musical karaoke up at the yeah. comedy club, and that was so cool because yeah. the whole like half the cast yeah. was there yes yeah, and of came course after the Wizard as soon as the first person went up and sang i was like i'm out i'm gonna no <laughs> no no that's a hard and i sang and then was like you no, i know i kind of hold my own no i have some video of that oh, you did fine you were amazing but, right. but um yeah just a really they just seemed very warm and inclusive yeah. and i've been i've been asking you this yeah like, how were they really backstage like no but like really yeah yeah so I mean, sometimes they slip up. Everybody does with pronouns or with yeah. uh, like certain things. But the number and you've got a couple of people who effusively come up and apologize. But you, it was yeah. just I don't know. Well, you know, you had people holding people accountable. You had people uh, in their defense, themselves accountable. Ashley. Yeah, they're gonna get the pronouns wrong because you change them. I don't change because anything. I've not called that thing. You know, good callback because good. people try to. <laughs> Try to honor you. We do. We yeah. hold you in high regard. I've when never declared ask, anything. When we ask you directly. You don't answer. We stumble and you laugh at us, which I love about you. And I'm just saying, I love you. Um, so yeah. what's next for you? What do you What do you got on the docket for your next uh, big production that we can all see? Uh, and we're all going to come see you. Lyrics doing Newsies in the fall. Nice. I'm going to mention it because I don't want to jinx it, but I'm, it. Really, I'm hoping we're not that on wood. I'm hoping that their commitment to to what they did in in the the prom is going to hold hold true for future productions. Uh, production teams change, so like there's no guarantee. Piece. Yeah, inclusivity. Yeah. Uh, the jury kind of indifferent casting, just mm-hmm. the respect, the consent, the, mm-hmm. the everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm hoping that that holds yeah. to my benefit. <laughs> and then 
And then <laughs> you got some summer plans. You're, I know you're not going to be yeah. on stage, but aren't you going to help? Yeah, uh, this will be my, I mean, hopefully I don't have a W9 yet, but uh, I need to talk to Marin. Uh, Marinick and Dominic's, Dominic's Filane, uh run uh Created Dirt Road Theater, which is a youth. Uh, oh, well, they don't is, just do youth things; they do all they do a things. lot of stuff. They're they do adult so, improv and sketch oh, comedy. Super talented um, in Northfield. Yeah, yeah they've yeah. got their um, mm -hmm. they've got a fundraiser uh, opening this weekend oh. for for their new space in Northfield. Okay. Nice. Um, and they're just super nice people. Yeah, so I'll hopefully be helping with their summer camp and uh, some school productions. <laughs> Nice. and delightful people super talented and is there a summer show though? oh yeah sorry yes, you're really yes. good at this i'm good at this i need hey, to hey, i should do this again just kidding. yeah uh i mean i'm not saying it's only to get me some dance training mm -hmm. for my newsies audition mm -hmm. but uh valley side. players yeah. is doing uh spam a lot spam a lot which i'm yeah. excited for yeah we'll see we'll see always look on the bright side of life that's the spirit. It's been a week, huh? It's it has been a week. Thank you. Um, and so the other thing, we've got a couple more minutes. Uh, if we could do a plug for both of us, because that's how I roll sure. as the narcissist that I am. Um, I want to harken back to another an, another kind of seminal moment in our relationship. Okay. Here. Uh we wrote a little play together. We did. And it was right, it, I think it was also like 2019-ish, because it was right before the world ended, wasn't it? It, it was when? Yeah. It was the beginning of COVID. It was right. It yes, was because we were rehearsing for Alice in Wonderland. We were rehearsing for Alice in Wonderland, which you ended up being in, mm -hmm. and I ended up not being in. Mm -hmm. Uh, because of though you were cast, you it was cast. The kid. So that was when I was to be clear that I was cast as the white the queen, queen, and then COVID, and, and then yeah. nope, and you look like a <laughs> tampon. <laughs> I have a tampon and a condom. So good combo. But yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's another story for another day. But um, you and I, yes, and you you were saying this earlier. There was a bat in the Valley Players Theater. There was a bat. We were sitting in the audience. Mm -hmm. You on a chair, myself on the floor. That's true. Tapping on your laptop, All waiting true. for the bat to like leave. Yeah. All true. Uh, uh, and we, and I think we had a moment together where we decided that we were going to write our own damn play because yeah. all of the things we've just talked about, see, we're coming full circle yeah. now, the frustration of not having either gender neutral or non-binary roles yeah. or roles that we felt we could inhabit, like truthfully, you know, like we can act straight, yeah. I suppose, or, you know, I can act like a woman if I have to, but why would I want to? Yeah. And so we wrote this play. Kind of channeling ourselves. Oops. Kind of channeling ourselves. And what I love about that, yeah. when I think back on it, is uh, I remember writing this. Yeah, and I can't was, get words out of my head on paper. To I, was my writing, I was at the computer and I wrote, you know, all these things that I would say obnoxiously in ex my extroversion. And I and I like made up in my head, I made up this whole character that was, you know, in my head was you. And you're like, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't that. say that. You're like, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't do that. That's never that that ever happened. Susan, you got to change this. And so we ended up sitting there together yeah. one night. I remember like the, the thermostat went off and yeah. you're wearing my coat. Yeah, it was cold. cold. It was cold. We did we did, it, was, it was so much fun. So so tell people a little bit about what, what was that play about and why was that special to us? Well, uh, the play was called Back of the Line. Mm -hmm. And it was, imagine that there's a line um, of people getting coupled together, like in relationships, dating. You get to the front of the line you're happy in love and off you go. Uh, and Susan's character comes, you know, you always want to start the opening scene, like in the middle, right. In the action. So, uh, comes in just like barreling insults off stage at the people who are sending her to the back of the line, being like, you know, I've served my time. Like I deserve to be at the front. Like what, what the heck? Uh, mm -hmm. and then we have this, you know, this love. heart to heart in the back of the line and, you know, Things were discussed. Things happen. Yeah. And uh, it was kind of heartwarming. I, yeah. I loved that for us. For a couple we, extra monologue it, in sections, but it's... It, it was it, some it, significant monologues going cathartic. on. But the gist of it was somebody literally said that to me one time, that that I didn't deserve happiness because I had a, I had a chance for happiness that <laughs> I squandered. I should interview them. And that I needed to wait my turn to be yeah. happy again. And I remember thinking like, and, and I'm just and I did in the back camera. of the line, just chilling out. And, I got nowhere and, to be. and your character was great because it was very true to who you are. Yeah. Much more chill and, you know, sort of hearing all the impact of this person who's over the top. And, uh, you know, we don't want to give away the ending because right. people should see the play because it's, you know, 
And it was just a little 10 minute play. But I was, you know, I was really proud of us for making a statement about yeah. what it's like to be that outsider and misunderstood, you know? Sure. Well, and if you have roles that you want to play or don't see yourself on stage, like, you know, it's it's quite the talking point that like, yeah, you got to go out and write the roles that you want to play. But but to have actually done it, it's like, oh, that is a thing. We can do that. Yeah. Um, And I hope that people in the community continue to do that. Yeah. That's a great ending note. Do you have anything else you'd like to share with our audience? Not so much. Do it. Do Just it. do it. Go out and be you and yeah. act and audition for things that you want uh, because those roles are out there. Yeah. Don't and- be disheartened if you're not uh, cast for roles that you would like be cast in uh ask questions reach out yeah yeah cool and audition for shows it's very fun exactly. it's super cathartic exactly and i want to thank you for being my guest you're welcome and now we must drink thank you everybody for listening have a great rest of your day bye as we continue to look at what are the lgbtq owned businesses and opportunities available to us, I kind of stumbled across this, a non-judgmental clothing optional campground. Yes, here in Vermont, in Greensboro Bend, it is called the Vermont Freedom Campground. And the people who run it are about to join us. So please welcome Jeff and Craig to a first visit on all things LGBTQ. So welcome. Good morning. Good morning. So what I'd like to start with is a little bit about who both of you are, sort of some of your life experiences before starting the Vermont Freedom Campground, and then we'll talk about the campground specifically. Mm, life experience. Well, I was an auto mechanic for 40 some years. I um, ended up my career owning an auto repair shop. Um, my so, employee... so if I come to the, the campground, I can get my car tuned up while I'm there? <laughs> I hated auto repair <laughs> 45 years and I won't touch my own car anymore. So... Um, it was a purely a job that I did out of income, not love. All right. People would rather be anywhere besides the auto mechanic shop. And so I, I like it that I'm in a business now that people want to come to. And what about you, Craig? I was previously in machine tool controls, computer aided controls, and then had a bed and breakfast in Racine. I also right. had breakfast in Madison, Wisconsin. Well, there there are some of the people who watched this show who lived in that area. What was the name of your bed and breakfast? Which one? In Madison or where? Uh, Madison, Madison, yes. Madison, Wisconsin was Stony Oaks Bed and Breakfast. All right. In Racine it was Loch Narian. Thank you. Okay, so you had some experience with hospitality before you entered into running a campground, which I appreciate is a whole different venue than a bed and breakfast. So what made you decide a campground? We were at a clothing optional campground in in, um, Mazamani, Wisconsin, called Cedar Hills. And we started going there because my aunt sold us a camper at cheap because her husband wasn't physically able to use it. We went to this campground and were put on a site and we never left that site for eight years. Um, The first year we were there, I told Craig that a day would come when I couldn't handle the crazy owner anymore and that we would have to leave. And the day came and kind of coincident at the same time, my employee walked in and said, Hey, I want to buy your business. And 
I couldn't refuse. And so I started looking for campgrounds and I was Googling um, campgrounds for sale. And uh, this place in Vermont came up. And I am a person that leaps into things. He's a person that's very cautious about going into things. I had I had already in my mind bought it the day that I saw it on the internet. Uh, he forced me to wait until the next spring when the snow was gone. Um, my two experiences with Vermont, my my how would I say it is uh, the Bob Newhart show? Yes. Um, and I was mistaken that the slogan was Vermont is for lovers. And it's actually Virginia's for lovers. And I bought the place and the first mud season, I said, what the hell have I done? And um, it's gotten better every year. I was going to say there, you know, everyone associates Vermont with both fall and winter. They totally don't know about mud season and stick season. So you know, we we have six seasons here in Vermont. Okay, so you had really no relationship with Vermont until you purchased the campground. No clue. All right. So the campground when it was being advertised, and it's in Greensboro Bend, which is you know a fairly remote area, even by Vermont standards, was it already a clothing? optional campground was it merely a traditional campground you know what what was what was the real invitation to buying it it was a price that i could afford without ever having to have a customer on the property and it was a campground that was closed how long it had been closed before you bought it? 15 years at least. Oh, my goodness. So, Craig, you were very good in giving the advice of we need to wait a little bit because, you know, maybe we'll we'll have a better opportunity here. Yes, it, we went out there and experienced it and we loved it right away. Well, we went out December 3rd. December 3rd in Vermont. There's three and a half feet of snow. We tried walking out on the property and couldn't get more than about 50 feet into it because we were exhausted. And uh, so at that time, we thought it was in the middle of nowhere. And then once we purchased it, we found out we're on a shortcut to Lindenville and it's busier than I would have ever thought that road would be. Okay, that there can be an advantage to that. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the campground itself. How large is it? And if I looked at your website correctly, you have a swimming pool, but most people associate Greensboro with Lake Caspian, you're not on Lake Caspian. Five miles away. Okay, so that's close. Right. So how many acres do you have for the campground? The entire property is 21.6 acres, but only eight of it is campground. 13 is deer sanctuary. Ooh. Um, we have to maintain that 13 acres as deer sanctuary um as part of the act 250 plan okay now are and you have hiking trails well we're in the process of developing trails through it yes and and how many campsites do you have i understand there's rv hookups and maybe cabins available as well yeah we have right now we have a uh, three cabins uh we have two campers uh, we're getting two more cabins next summer. Um, and then as far as RV sites, there's like 36. And then there's probably, I mean, tent spaces, there's probably 20 or 30 or so. It just all, you know, 
tents can go anywhere basically correct i was gonna say that's that sounds like a lot of sites and the opportunity for having a fair amount of people there at any time well the big thing that thrilled me about the place is it's got 1500 amp electrical service it's got um a well that pumps into a cistern with 1500 gallon capacity and then a booster everything is top notch as far as the mechanicals um the campground we came from in wisconsin had been wired by a farmer using 14 gauge going 350 feet and so if you've ever tried to run an air conditioner at the end of 350 feet of 14 gauge yeah. wire it doesn't work very well <laughs> I, place, I don't think it'll work at all but okay <laughs> this place has got electric cables as thick as my fingers and it uh, is all top-notch uh, mechanicals. It's like a small city. Okay, and so uh, is there electrical and water for everywhere. the tent sites as well as? Yeah. The, okay, for a Vermont campground, that's impressive because there are a fair amount that advertise them at, themselves as being rustic, which means you're coming with your tent and whatever you can carry in. If it's not battery operated or a little propane tank, you're out of luck. But no, okay. there's, there's outlets everywhere there. So what has been the response to Vermont Freedom as being a clothing optional campground? Well, the first year that we opened, I had people stopping and asking me if we were opening the campground and everybody that stopped was absolutely elated. They said, we are so sick and tired of driving past this place and watching it die every day. And, you know, some people had actually changed their route to work because they uh, were so sad looking at the campground. It just was dead. And, um, now, I mean, the difference between when we arrived and now you can tell that the place is you know, alive and it gets, uh, just more beautiful every year. So what, what, when it, people were excited because the campground was coming back, what was the response when they found out it was an over 18 clothing optional? campground well i know that the one guy after i told him that we we're open he said i handed out flyers brochures for this place when it opened in 2004 and he said i am just so excited to it to be open again and i said oh and by the way we're clothing optional and he went oh wow that's cool <laughs> um our next door neighbors, the ones that are gun happy, um, even they, um, I remember Warren, uh, their kids were 10, or if two boys, 10 and 12. And I remember him saying, um, oh, my boys will really like that. Um, they, can, they can sneak through the woods and think they're getting a cheap peek at, you know. Right. Um, if you've read the articles, um, the very first article that we were written about, one of the select board members um, was asked about, um, and, and he started listing off how this season has black flies and this season has this vermin and this season has this and this. And I'm thinking, oh my God, I hope he doesn't work for the travel department of Vermont. <laughs> Um, you know, there he's he, no one, not a single negative response from anybody. You know, Vermont is legal to be naked. That's correct. As as long as you are not, as long as you do not deliberately disrobe in public or you're doing something to try and get attention, you could walk nude. And we, we have an annual tradition, both in Burlington and Montpelier, with a nude bike ride that at times has been a fundraiser for other events. I want to circle around really quickly back to a comment that you had made or 
referencing the select board members references to our seasons are black flies and mosquitoes a problem at the campground because if i'm choosing to come and be clothing optional do i need to shower and deet before i get out of my tent well i will tell you that wisconsin has way more biting flies than vermont does okay as way more mosquitoes than vermont does um the insects are really not a big issue i mean they can be at various times annoying but okay. usually for a couple hours here or a couple hours there uh okay. no you don't have to no one is uh bathing in deet and uh <laughs> um no it's really not an issue okay i want to talk more about who comes to the campground because your website and your Facebook page both really promote if you're comfortable being around other people who have chosen to be clothing optional and you are respectful of those people. If you're respectful of the other campers, we want you to come spend time with us. So who is it that is choosing to come to Vermont Freedom Campground? Well, I mean, it's everybody. I mean, we have gay, we have straight, we have um, more lesbians attend in Vermont than attend in Wisconsin. Okay. More, more younger lesbians in in Vermont than in Wisconsin. Um, and here we never saw, very rarely ever saw any lesbians, especially young women. And he, at the campground, we have quite a few that attend the straight women are always a little leery and you know they think they're going to be the only woman on the property and you know i try and I, I you know people call up and ask who's there you know who and i i don't get into that i mean yeah. if coming there specifically for that reason then stay home yeah. If you're coming there to camp and have a good time and, and maybe interact with somebody else, then come on along. But I'm not there to provide you a stable of whatever it is you're looking for. Um, yeah, I get into some really, I, I hesitate a lot of conversations I don't, I don't get into. I was going to say, and I appreciate that that it's like, wait a minute, this is about your experience. This is about camping. I'm very for, forthcoming in what it is that we can provide. You know, don't don't ask me to provide a service. So, but do you, do you host or sponsor events that I might want to be looking at and consider if I'm coming to spend time at Vermont Freedom? We, nor well, on all the holidays, we, we usually have, well, we always have a dance. We always have a potluck. We um, generally will do three drag shows per year. Um, we, um, yes, so we do, we, we do have events, but a lot of campgrounds will do something every single weekend. Uh -huh. I don't. I okay. will never do something every weekend. If it's a holiday weekend, you can guarantee that there's going to be um, music, uh, a dance, a potluck. There possibly will be a drag show, something like that. But as far as every weekend, there's a lot of weekends where I tell, um, well, <laughs> I can't remember. I had a great response. A guy, I, I have people come up and they expect me to have an event every weekend. Yeah. And I will respond with, there's nothing but the trees that weekend or, or something like that. Um, we have nothing, absolutely nothing. And that's what you're going to experience when you get there is trees, um, you know, so the people there, that kind of stuff. I was going to say, so if I go onto the website, there is a place where events would be listed. So I could take that into consideration. Otherwise, I should bring a good book with me and maybe some music. Yep. 
Well, plus there's uh, a lot of um, trails and uh, lakes and things to go to, uh, country farms, the whole experience of Vermont. I mean, Caspian Lake is five miles away. You can go walk on any road around there. It's very beautiful. You know, there's, um, yeah, there's just so many, I don't know, I guess, you know, if you're coming for a party every weekend, you're not going to find it. You're, you're coming for the solitude of a rural area in Vermont and a camping experience. You know, that that should be your expectation. As a child, we were not allowed to take a TV, a radio, a telephone, anything. And, and that was our camping. And, I, you know, so I guess kind of, like I say, I, I, you know, a holiday weekend, you can expect there's going to be a party on Saturday. Yeah. But uh, the rest of the weekend, no, you're going to, well, you'll swim or sit in the hot tub or whatever. Oh, there's a hot tub as well as the swimming pool? Yeah, we have three of them. They're um, seven-person hot tubs, so there's three of those. Very good. I was going to say, I think my experience growing up was the same as yours. I grew up in a family with three brothers. So what our parents did is they took us truly wilderness camping for most of my early years. And then Vermont on our campground started putting up lean-tos, which for us was a luxury you mean I don't have to stand here and put the tent up and wonder if, you know, if it's canvas and I touch the sides, you know, the water's going to leak through if it rains. But so other than the most recent incident, the community response to you, it sounds as though has been positive. I, every single person that I told that first year we were opening and told them that we were clothing optional had absolutely no problem with it and i also made the statement because there is a school bus that drives past our property twice a day and i said i will uh, not have nudity up in the front there along the road when the school bus is going by and one of the parents stopped down and said thank you i appreciate that um, so oh, going along that theme, the campground itself is well defined so that if I'm someone who is choosing to camp there and I'm choosing to be clothing optional, I sort of know this is where this is where I have a degree of privacy or shared privacy. And this is when sort of the public can see what's going on. Right. If they, what was kind of funny was that um, I had this gentleman that had never been at a clothing optional campground and he must have asked me 30 times where he could go, where he couldn't go, all that kind of stuff. And I told him, I said, you could walk down the street if you want to. And I, the next year I heard from the guy who does the town roads. He said that one of uh, a gentleman was walking down the road naked and that uh, Warren had talked with him. And I said, no way. I said, no way. That guy had no way with it. And sure enough, he was walking down the road naked outside the campground and Warren, the next door neighbor talked to him and, you know, and, uh, you know, he had no problem with it. And, and Warren says, you guys, well, in fact, all of our neighbors around us, except for a couple say, you guys are a delightful, addition to the neighborhood because it gives us something to talk about <laughs> thank you for being the source of you know community a community dialogue yeah so so with that thank you for spending this time with us good luck with the vermont freedom campground going forward we'll make sure both the website and the facebook page is posted the one question I didn't ask you that, as we're concluding, if you could please clarify, when does your season start and when does it end? May 1st is the opening date every year. The ending date is generally the last week of October. Okay. Um, here it was the 23rd. 
Um, I think next season it's like the 21st or something. It's, I don't know where I, how I pick it or whatever, but it's the last week of October. All right. Uh, and if you want to be alone, October is the month to come because very few people except for the seasonals are there in October. All right. So thank you. Good luck going forward. And I'm looking forward to bringing you back to get updates of, so how's it going? All right. Thank you. Come and visit. Yeah, stop over. Thank you for joining us. And until next time, remember, resist. <laughs>